Hey, what's up guys? This is Freddy Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. And this time we want to create this beautiful, a little bit disturbing cloth sculpture. And you can see that it will react to your gravity, to your turbulence, to your forces in the scene. So it feels pretty organic and it is up to you how disturbing and organic you really want to make it. So of course you could increase the subsurface scattering feeling even more, give it some skin tone, all right, and turn it into something pretty ugly if you want to do that. But you can also do it like me and mix in some purple pinkish tones and just give it more of an abstract feeling. So this is what we will create today. Just be sure that I was definitely inspired by this bubble inflation tutorial by Redilla Media. So if you want to learn more about this technique, check out his YouTube channel. He has some amazing tutorials there. And if you want to have more of the good stuff, be sure to check out my Patreon 3D Bonfire. You can also start the free trial here for seven days to test out the stuff, download some files. And if you cancel it within seven days, then it won't won't turn into a monthly membership, all right? So just feel free to test this one out. This is me on Instagram if you want to follow my latest artworks and stuff like that. Other than that, ring the bell on YouTube, leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all the good stuff, okay? And now we are through the mandatory stuff, so let's dive into Cinema 4D and have some fun. All right, finally in Cinema 4D, and you can see that I can just play this scene back. It's already cached, and you can see that this is just so funny, and it's so much fun to work with that stuff, all right? So you can see that this one for example is reacting with the forces so it has inertia gravity weight to it and this one is swinging around these little bubbles here and they stretch a little bit like this one and i think this is it's just so much fun to work with that stuff in cinema 4d and i want to share the technique with you all right so of course, we don't want to work in this scene, which is already built and ready to render. So I think we just want to start from scratch. All right. And by the way, if you are a little bit confused here, you can see that when I go out of the camera, actually, it's five times the same object here. So when I would delete all of these instances here, then you can see that basically I only simulate this one element here, which is in the center. And then I just duplicate it and make my scene a little bit more rich. Okay. So let's start with one central element. And therefore, I would just go to a new scene and in this scene you can see all of these assets here and these ones you can also download on my patreon i shared them last week i think and all of these elements they come in different resolutions these elements they are just great as a starting point for soft body or cloth simulations so if you want to go more for a soft body simulation then i would go with elements like these ones with not such a high resolution but if you want to do some cloth simulation then you would pick the same element in a high resolution like this one you could even make the resolution even higher to get even more wrinkles and stuff like that but anyway you can see that i created all of these models for you just as a quick start okay looks like i should have moved these ones over a little bit here but anyway you can download all these models on my patreon but for today i think we could just start with an element like this one so i just go to edit copy go once again into a new scene kill the sphere put this element into it and now i think it is levitating somewhere else so let's just go to the coordinates set this one to zero and there we can start you could also put the figure into the scene just to see the size relationship so i guess this one is like three meters in height or something like that which will be a very good ratio for your simulation all right so let's kill the figure and let's start here from scratch i hope that i can remember how to do it because i forget stuff all the time but i think i can remember it and i think i want to have even more resolution here so this is why i want to put this one maybe into a remesher all right and then i just go to object here and set this one for example to 200 okay it's simulating down here this is looking better now i press c to make this one editable and i think this could be a good starting point for our resolution here now right click on it go to other text and down to vertex map all right because we want to use a vertex map with its different values which will tell the cloth engine where it can inflate like a balloon and where it will be more stiff. So it's pretty simple, honestly. Let's right click once again on our remesh, go to simulation and put the cloth tag on it. All right, so now when you press Ctrl D, you could also go to your simulation settings here to the scene and you can see we have the standard gravity in the scene. So this is why when I would simulate this one, this will just fall down. So this is not what we want. We want to deactivate the gravity completely or maybe we could work with a little bit gravity later, but for now this is okay. Then we want to say, hey, you funny object, you should inflate like a balloon with an overpressure of, for example, of five. But we want to restrict this value 
to certain areas on the vertex map. All right, so let's just dive into the vertex map, click on use fields. For now, we can kill the freeze here. Let's go inside of it, use a shader field and now go into the shader field and put a noise into it. This is a good start, but I think this noise is kind of ugly. So let's first scale it up a little bit. And what I learned in the tutorial that I just mentioned in the start is that, for example, Voronoi 3 works pretty nice with this technique, all right, because it has a nice subdivision of red areas and yellow areas. And yellow will be the inflated areas, by the way. I would just scale this up to maybe something like this, all right? We could just test this one already if this is working. I think it can help and I increase the contrast here a little bit and A to get rid of the lines. Now I go into the balloon tag, put this vertex map into the map here. You will get a strange error when you just do it like this, but I can show you now this is going crazy because we also want to restrict the cloth piece in areas where it is red in this map here to be not inflated and to be more stiff, so to say. And therefore, we go to the mix animation with pins, put this tag also into this field here and we only want to restrict it, for example, with 20 or 15. So we could just test this one, how this will look. All right, I'm a bit surprised that it looks not so good. Okay, let me just double check it. Maybe I did an error here. Let's put this one to 50. Okay, okay. You are going crazy. I don't like that. So maybe the ballooning is too high. Let's put this one to two. All right, this is better. It's still going crazy and this is annoying me. So I think we should also put up the bendiness to, let's put this one to 5,000 and stretching this to 1,000. Let's also decrease the thickness of the cloth to maybe 0.2. Let's see if this one is getting better. Whoa, it's still going crazy here. I don't like this one. Let's put this one to 10. All right, now it looks like that we slowly find some better numbers here. Control D to go into the settings simulation. And I think that we want to dampen it a little bit to just suck out a little bit of the energy, make it more smooth and calm, more graceful, stuff like that. So this is already a good start. Now I think we can go into the balloon tag again, maybe put the overpressure to four. Let's just see what will happen. Okay, so it looks like this is not a good value. Let's put it down to three. All right, still some ugly issues. Let's put it to two. Okay, so it looks like we have some issues with a higher overpressure, but I want to test the limits here. So let's just see when we go up to this value or let's put it to 20 frames over pressure is two. And now slowly I want to increase this one further to maybe frame 50 and put this one to four. Let's just see if this one will look better. All right. Yeah, why not? Okay, now it's going crazy. Control D to dampen it even more. Maybe I want to have more sub steps. Not sure. Maybe a smoothing iteration. Just play with these values. Of course, when you increase these ones, then the simulation will get a little bit slower over time. All right. Okay. This is really funny. Okay. That's not how it was intended that these little subdivision lines, they just break and this stuff is melting into some broccoli stuff here. Okay. Okay, so that was not intended, but it looks also pretty funny. So if you want to help it to hold its shape a little bit better, then I think we could go here again and put this one maybe to 20. Let's just see these numbers. You just have to test it and see when it will work. All right, now you can see here it is going a little bit funny. All right, so maybe the ballooning here, I shouldn't put that too high. Maybe I will just go up to 2.5. All right, let me test this once again. Let's see. Okay, somehow it doesn't really like the higher balloon value. Okay, so I think I want to do something else. I want to go into the noise here and scale this one up. And now I recognize my fault. I think the problem is that the map here is moving with the inflation. So what I totally forgot is to clamp this one down, freeze it. And now I think we will not have this issue anymore. Okay, so now you can see simulation is pretty calm and beautiful. And now in comparison, I think we could even go here to balloon value of five. Let's do it. Let's see this one more time. All right, more and more inflation. Now you can see it is filling up with air like crazy. Okay, so probably this is a bit too much. So once again, I just put this one to free. 
And I think at the same time, we could also animate up the target length and also we can use the tag also here in the target length. And therefore I will just go to frame 20, leave this one at 100 and maybe I will go up to frame 60 to 70 and put this one to 150. Let's just see what will happen. You can also see that I just play with these values and see how it will react. All right, I think that this one is pretty cool. Okay. So what you could do now is to, for example, just put a vibrate tag on this one and let this one dance like crazy, like there's no tomorrow. Okay, so this one will rotate and these bubbles will shake with the gravity, with the inertia. And I think this could be a pretty cool effect. And therefore, I will go to frame 20, for example. And sorry, I will start at zero and then slowly go to 500 here. Let's do it like this. The frequency, I think this one should be lower or something like that and now let's see what will happen okay we give the object some time to inflate but now you can see the movement is kicking in and these bubbles they move with the rotation and i think this is looking so cool now this is looking really sick all right i really like it and i guess from here on i would say this is up to you what you will create out of it you can see and this is what I did here and on my Patreon I will go into the shading here with the beautiful subsurface material. I also want to show you some really nice tricks because I developed a pipeline to streamline and optimize my rendering times and therefore I use some upscaling, some denoising, some frame interpolation and stuff like that. So I just want to show you how you can render your simulations in maybe two to three hours depending on your machine of course but without killing your system and without being totally sad that you can't render out the good stuff okay so on my patreon i will show you some pretty neat render techniques some tips and tricks how you can optimize your render workflow and just have something really crazy that you can put every day onto your instagram without killing your computer all right so thank you so much for your time here on youtube be sure to follow me on patreon other than that ring the bell here on youtube do the good stuff have an amazing day have an amazing life be powerful be prolific and never forget that you are awesome okay <laughs> bye everyone all right and you know what here is a little bonus for you just in case that you are curious about how i built my final scene all right so maybe this could be interesting for you let me just fix the camera here all right so now i can get out of this camera and basically you can see that i worked with a couple of lights here this is my main object and maybe this could be interesting for you to see the resolution that i went for for my final object all right it's this one it's the same principle that i just showed you and uh, maybe i just look through it from the camera you can see that we get this beautiful inflation and see to get rid of the lines and what else could be interesting for you maybe when i press ctrl d then you can see my final settings here you can see that i went up with the sub steps a little bit also with the iterations damping and all of the good stuff here to just get a more clean solution because when all of this is inflating and you have also the rotation and stuff in your scene then it could happen that one of these bubbles will penetrate through the neighbor bubble all right so don't go too crazy without increasing the simulation settings here that could be definitely also necessary in your scene but other than that there is no big secret here you can see i also worked with the turbulence i animated up the strength to 80 all right so this is giving me some extra random movement but in addition as i already showed you i also worked with the vibrate tag and went up with a frequency of 0.2 and then I just put a beautiful material on my bubbles here. Maybe I will keep this one as a secret for my Patreon, okay? Just as a little secret, all right? But of course, I work with subsurface scattering. You can see this. And it's obviously a blend material between two materials where I blend between one subsurface material, which is more yellow, and one which is more like this skin tone. Other than that, I can also show you the light setup. Okay, so I have one light from the bottom here. You can see this one is kissing my element here from the back, like a little rim light. You could call it like that. When I deactivate it, you can see then it looks more flat, more graphical, which also has its benefits so i wouldn't say that this is looking bad but sometimes you want to give your object this just this little extra punch okay and other than that you can see that from the top 
I work with these two key lights here. All right, of course, you could also use like one bigger one or rectangle or something like that. But for some reason, I felt a little bit playful here and used two discs next to each other. And this is giving me this beautiful key light here. Without it, you can see you get a pretty dull rendering. But of course, you could also compensate for that when you just grab your HDRI in your scene and for example, put this one to zero and zero, then I could, for example, rotate this around until I would also have something like a key light here, put this one to 60 maybe, all right, put this one to 30 or put this one to minus 50. Now this light is also coming from the top here, something similar, but I like to work with HDRIs and combine them with hand placed area lights to just art direct my lights even more. Okay, so most of the time I use area lights in combination with an HDRI light for just some overall light in the scene. All right, but let me make a cut here because I get the feeling when I start talking about lighting and stuff, then this will be easy like a 60 minute tutorial. So let's make a cut here. I hope that you learned something cool. I'm excited what you come up with. Thank you so much for your time. Have an amazing day. Bye everyone.